Joe Cortez and welcome to FairfootFirm.com. This week we're going to talk a little bit about some important fights that are coming up. People are just anxiously waiting to see what's going to happen to Mayweather. Is Mayweather going to fight Canelo Alvarez? And will that be at 147 or 154? Who knows what way it'll come in. You know what? It's going to be a, a chess game here about, first of all, if the fight is ever going to take place this year. And if so, what is the weight? 154 for Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is a natural 154, but I'm sure the night of the fight, he's going to have another 5 to 10 pounds over the 154 weight. When Mayweather is normally at 147, he'll come in maybe 150 for that particular fight that night. And uh, so he may not want to fight at 154. He may want to call it at 147. And let's see what happens. That'd be a little difficult for Canelo Alvarez to come down to 147, but he's young and he can still uh, work a little harder to get the weight off. So he, it would not be as difficult if he was, if he was older. Mayweather's 36, but Mayweather is, is very disciplined and he's keeping his weight three pounds above his fighting weight at any given time of the year. He's a very disciplined when it comes to his weight. And uh, so we're talking about that part, pos fight possibly happening in September. We don't know. We'll see. Now, we also have two other great fights coming up. And one is Manny Marquez against uh, Tim Bradley. Now, they both come off some very difficult fights. Uh, most recently, uh, Bradley fighting uh, Provodnikov. And that was a, a great fight. Bradley got dropped three times in that fight. So he's coming up for, he, he got the win, but a very difficult fight for him. Marquez, as you all know, he was in a nice war. Not too bad. I mean, not as bad because uh, he was able to knock out Pacquiao. But up to, throw, up to that point, it was a tough war for Marquez. But Marquez is known to, to be very uh, 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 strong. And he really he shows he has a lot of heart. And at his age, he's about 35, 36 himself. But he's a young 35, 36. Let's see what he got to show that night against Bradley. That fight going to take place uh, here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, in Macau, China, you have Manny Pacquiao coming off that loss, uh, KO loss to Manny Marquez. And uh, Manny Marquez uh, really uh, sucked it to Pacquiao that night. And he, uh, pa Pacquiao will be going against Brandon Reels. And that'll be an interesting fight because Brandon Reels also came off a difficult fight off. Uh, uh, Alvarado, and that was a war itself. So all these four fighters got to some more uh, wars that you can think of in the last couple of years, but these four fighters are very uh, crowd pleasers. They come in to fight. They, should, they give it all they have. Every round to them is like a championship round, so you, the boxing fans are going to get their money's worth in any one of those four fights. Uh, I'm sorry, any one of those two fights. Now, boxing is up under rise again, like I said last, last week's segment. I mean, boxing is really uh, coming to a point where people are saying, wow. But now they're talking about uh, Mayweather and uh, Alvarez uh, fighting in, uh, in September, but they're talking about perhaps if, maybe they'll, if they don't fight each other, they'll fight at different venues. The fans don't like to see that. The fans want to see one night of boxing, a big night of boxing at one venue. Well, last year, they had uh, Chavez against uh, Martinez September 15th, and that was that fight took place here in Las Vegas at the Thomas and Mac. And then uh, at the other venue, you had Mayweather. Uh, I'll take it back. Uh, we had uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez fighting uh, Joselito Lopez, and that was uh, two great fights, same night in Las Vegas. And guess what? They both sold out. But the fans at home who are not able to come here, I get cheated out because they're going to be waiting and switching channels back and forth. So they'd rather say, you know what, they give me one fight this weekend, one big one, and next weekend give me another big fight. Well, you know, let's see what happens this year. But it's going to be interesting. Now, talking about boxing itself, sometimes let's go with the officials and commissions, what happens sometimes. And I'll give you an example, something that may occur uh, and I'm sure it has occurred, but we haven't heard about it. But sometimes an official, in between rounds, for some reason or another, gets sick. He's not able to continue judging uh, uh, for, for that next round or whatever. Now, the commission has to be 
on his toes and be ready for the unexpected. Because sometimes in boxing what happens is that uh, if, a, if a judge gets sick, we have to replace him. Now this fight is already in place. Now what does the referee do? If it happens that the referee, if the, if the judge gets sick during the course of the round, and then somebody has to alert the referee so they can call time, and uh, this is an unexpected uh, thing that happens in boxing, and then what, what, what will you do as a referee? You call time, you have the commission to get one of the other judges on the sideline and have him replace the judge who took ill. Now let's say for example, it was not a major thing, a, a, a judge had to just run to the, to the restroom during the rest period. You know, you hardly hear of that, but you have to be prepared for it. So what do you do? So I feel, and talking to our executive director, Keith Kaiser, about this, and we come to the conclusion that the best thing to do, if you're going to replace that judge for that particular uh, moment, he's out, keep that same judge in place. Don't replace him again when the guy comes back from, the, from his restroom. You know, all judges, referees, should try to eat very light <laughs> before you get to the fight. So this way you know that you're going you're to be concentrating on the fight and not worrying about what's going to happen in your pants. <laughs> but anyway, to make a long story short, the thing is if you replace a judge, keep the judge that you replace him with, keep him in there until the end of the fight. Okay? And another thing is talking about scales. What scales do we use for the weigh-ins? Are we going to use the stand-up scale that you use when you go to your medical office or are you going to use a digital scale? Well, sometimes the digital scale is something else that I discussed with Keith Kaiser. That's why I like to talk with Keith Kaiser about these different topics because we have so many fights here in Las Vegas, and I still say that Nevada has one of the best boxing commissions in the world. New York, New Jersey, they all follow California. They all pretty much work the same. We all try to exchange ideas with one another not to keep boxing at the same level. But you know, everybody across the board should be following, let's say, Nevada, New York, uh, New Jersey, California, so we can all be on the same page. So, what is the question? What the question is: Do you use a digital scale or do you use a stand-up scale? Well, digital scale sometimes the weight cl class is 170, and the fighter comes in at a digital scale 170.2. They're gonna make a little beef about why he didn't make the weight. He's 0.2. Come on, on a stand-up scale, it'll read 170. Period. So it's up to you. There's no rule that says one over the other. But if I was you, I'd go with the stand-up scale. Okay? So that's the other topic. Now another thing I want to talk to you about is how does boxing continue to have, how can boxing continue to have big fights in all areas of, the, of this planet? Where? Having big fights, you have to develop the talent. So we have to go back to where do we start? We start with the amateurs. And the amateur level, we have to develop more amateur talent out there. I mean, it's a disgrace here in the United States that we don't have top-notch fighters fighting the Olympics. I mean, we haven't gotten a gold medal in the Olympics on the men's side. We got one on the female side in the last Olympics. Thank God we had a female there because oh, we would have gotten zero in the Olympics. But uh, I still say that uh, we have to work with our youngsters and get good trainers out there to train these young fighters. And I think what's really lacking is you got a handful of good trainers out there, but there's not enough. I believe that we have to train the trainers. Not to take anything away from trainers. I mean, everybody's trying to get started somewhere. So I, but I think we should have a school for training uh, the uh, trainers. We need for judges, for referees. At the amateur level, you know, we, can keep, we, have, we keep those individuals going. But I still think that our main focus is develop young talent in the ring, fighters. Because five years from now, 10 years from now, boxing will be back down on, on, on the downside because Mayweather will be gone. Uh, a lot of these top-notch fighters are around today, they'll all be gone. So where do we go from there? Where's the talent coming from? So it's a wake-up call for all of us in boxing to make sure we develop good young talent. And uh, all I can tell you is that I'm a de dedicated individual when it comes to my boxing. I hope you guys out there, fans, judges, referees, timekeepers, inspectors, doctors, will watch this show here on a weekly basis so we can come up with new ideas and just shoot the breeze a little bit about 
how we can improve boxing because boxing is definitely a sport that's going to be around for many, many, many years, but we don't want to see boxing going down. We have it on the upside right now. We proved it in the last half year or so. Boxing is back up, and we're going to keep it there. Guys, we'll talk to you next week. Take care.